Welcome to the Data Management Skill Group Guide. For this first task, we're going to be looking at how we can use formatting and formula to transform and visualize data. Specifically, we're going to look at the basic formula, the built-in functions, how to add charts, conditional formatting, and pivot tables. Let's take a look. The first thing we want to do is navigate to the Pet Shop Data file. Open it up, and in this case, we're going to be using Microsoft Excel. The very first thing that we need to do is save our file in our given location. So we're simply going to hit File, Save As, and browse to a choice location that we can easily find later on. In this example, I'm going to save it onto the desktop. As we go through the project, it is really important that we save from time to time so that we can be guaranteed that our work is secure. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at what the Pet Shop Data file contains. We've got some worksheets at the bottom of this workbook. We have the Animals worksheet, a Details worksheet, and a Sales worksheet. And we're going to use all of these worksheets as we go through. On the guide that you've been given, we're now looking at subtask 2. So we're going to navigate to the animals worksheet and complete the following steps. In cell D21, we need to calculate the number of cats and dogs. So in our formula bar, we're going to enter the function to do that. Equals sum. And we're going to click on the number of cats, which is cell C4. And we're going to use the plus sign and go to cell C5, which is the number of dogs. We'll close our bracket and press enter. In cell C23, we need to calculate the number of hamsters minus the number of rabbits. And so again, in our formula bar, equals sum click on the hamster quantity, minus the rabbit quantity, and close the bracket, and press enter. In cell J4, calculate the total cell, which is the number of sold animals, multiplied by their sale price. So in J4, we'll do equals sum, the number sold, which is in H4, multiplied by the sale price, which is in G4. Close our bracket and press enter. We're then asked to copy the formula down from J4 to J11. So by selecting J4, we can navigate to the bottom right of the cell and we'll notice the mouse changes to a crosshair. We can simply drag down and populate all the remaining cells. Finally, for subtask 2, in cell D25, we need to calculate the average animal type number. Well, to do that, we're given some information. We're told that there are 78 animals across 8 different species. So we're type equals average 78 divided by 8. We can now move on to looking at subtask 3. Again, we need to be in the animals worksheet to complete the following steps. In cell C13, we need to sum the number of animals in stock. So we can type equals sum, open up our bracket, and drag from C4 down to C11, and close our bracket. Having completed this formula, we then need to copy it across between cell C13 to H13 and then J13 to L13. We could do this in a couple of ways. We could simply drag all the way to L13, noting that I13 should not have been populated, so we can delete that cell. Or 
undoing my steps, we could actually copy C13 and then selecting D13 to H13, we can paste and J13 to L13, we can paste. The next step is to find cell D27 and calculate the average number of animals in the stock. So we can type equals average, open our bracket and select the stock quantity numbers. Closing our bracket and pressing enter. We've then got a series of steps that need to round the figures. Taking D27, we don't want all the numbers after the decimal place. Well, to do that with any formula, we can use the round function. In our formula bar, we'll type the words round and we'll open our bracket, keeping everything in the formula bar that was there already rigid. We'll then do a comma and we're given a choice of a number of digits. In this case, we don't want any after the decimal place. So we'll type in zero and close our bracket. Pressing enter will update our average number of animals. We need to do the same for cell D25. So again, we type round, open our bracket, comma, zero, and close bracket, and press enter. M4 also requires a rounding. We type round, we open our bracket, we leave our formula as it was, we put a comma in, a zero for zero decimal places, and close our bracket. We then need to do exactly the same for all the other cells between M4 and M11. Well, we can simply select M4, and using our tool bottom right crosshair, we can drag down, and we'll have an update. We need to create a count for the number of animals in the stock. To do that, we type equals count, open our bracket, and select the numbers within C4 to C11, the animals that are in stock. Closing our bracket and pressing enter shows us we have got seven different types of animal in stock. It's counted any numbers within that range. So we've got a total of eight different animals, but the birds actually don't have any present. So there are seven quantities in that range. The next task is to count the total number of animals that could be housed. If we type equals count and select the animals that the pet shop could own and close our bracket, we'll notice we're given a zero number. That's because count is looking for numbers. However, what we can do is a slightly different formula. If we type equals count A, count A will count the number of cells in a range that are not empty. So opening our bracket and selecting cells B4 to B11, it will count all of the cells that have a name of an animal that could be housed. We can then close our bracket and press enter and we'll see that that's been updated. It's probably prudent at this point to say, whenever you're looking at any formula, when you begin to type into Excel, it will give you suggestions of what the function does. And you can scroll down them to see all the different options that you might think are appropriate in that case. We're then asked in cell D19, to create a VLOOKUP for the name entered in D18. In other words, we want to find this word here, George, in a lookup table and find out some information about it. To do this, we need to navigate across the Animals worksheet and the Details worksheet. And we'll notice that our VLOOKUP 
in the task that we're asked to do is contained within E2 to F10. There's a variety of animal names and next to it we have the type of animal that that refers to. What we're trying to do is find out whatever that name is, what animal is it? Well in this case we've got the name George and we could go over to the details worksheet, find where George is and we would find out that George is in fact a cat. However, rather than doing that manually, we can ask the computer to do it via a VLOOKUP. So let's take a look at how that works. In cell D19, we type the following formula. Equals VLOOKUP and we open our bracket. We're then informed of the next steps that we need to do. First of all, I need to look up my value. I need to find the thing that I'm looking for, but I'm then going to refer to in my list. So in this case, I'm looking for the name George. So I can click on D18. I then need to do a comma. It's now asking me to find my table. Well, my table is located in the details worksheet and it's between cells E2 and F10. I then do another comma and it's asking for my column index number. This is the column where the data will be read from. So in other words, I want to look in column 1 for the name George, but I actually want the data from column 2 to be displayed. So I type number 2. Finally, I've got a range lookup after my comma. I can either have a true value, which finds me an approximate match, but in this case, I'm looking for a defined name. So I'm going to type the word false. And this will look for only an exact match. It will only look for the words George. I close my bracket and I press enter. I'm then taken back to my animals worksheet and I'll notice that George has been updated below to be referred to as a cat. I'm then asked to test that. So in cell D18, I change the word George to Clive. And it now updates saying Clive is a dog. And I can confirm that is the case by finding Clive as a dog. Now of course this wouldn't work for names that aren't within our VLOOKUP. So if I chose the name David, I'll be thrown up with an error. David is not in that place. Of course I could at any point update more names and I could change my VLOOKUP rather than going from E2 to F10 to go into further rows down if I have more names. The next task is to go to cell D4 and again to use my VLOOKUP. This time I want to be looking up data from the cell B4. But again, the table is contained within the details worksheet. However, for this task I am being asked to use an absolute reference. Let's see why that's important and how we do it. I could do a classic VLOOKUP whereby as previously I type VLOOKUP, I choose my cell, in this case I'm looking at B4 for cat, I type comma, I find my table within the details worksheet and I select B2 to C9 for my table. I have comma and I type 2 because I want to look in column 2 and then I type the words after a comma false because I want an exact match. Closing my bracket and pressing enter will give me my quantity of cats. However, what I can't do at this point is simply drag down to populate the others. If I do that I'll notice a problem. At the bottom I've got three errors and if I look closely my original VLOOKUP 
was looking between B2 and C9. However, by the time I get to the bottom, it's now looking between B9 and C16. It's changed where it's looking at as I've dragged down. To alleviate that problem, I need to do some absolute referencing. I want my value look up to go down as I go down the rows. But I want to keep the actual V look up in the different worksheet always the same. To do that, I can put some dollar signs in front of the columns and the rows in which I'm looking. So rather than B2 to C9, I'm doing dollar B dollar 2 to dollar C dollar 9. If I press enter, the first hasn't changed. But now dragging down, I'll notice that my very bottom one has no longer got the error. It's still looking at cell B11, but now it's looking to the VLOOKUP that remains B2 to C9. Our next task is to find cell I4 and create an IF statement. We want to know if any animals have been sold. That information is given to us in column H. It tells us the quantity of animals that were sold in a particular time frame. We notice no birds were sold, but all other animals did have some sales. This is how an if statement will work. We're type equals if, and we'll open up our bracket. We will choose H4, which currently has the number 3. We now need to do a logical test. So I'm going to ask if H4 is greater than 0, for example, if any animals have been sold, and then I put a comma, and I'm asked to put the value that I want if that statement is true, i.e. if more than zero animals have been sold, one or above, I would like the word yes to be displayed. Very important, I put the yes in speech marks. I then type a comma, and I'm now asked for my value if false. In other words, if the value in H4 is zero. At that point, I'd like the words no to be displayed. So again, I write the word no in speech marks. I can close my bracket and press enter. My result shows me the word yes. Yes, some animals were sold. If I copy that formula now down from I4 to I11, I notice that they're all saying yes, apart from my bird number. No birds were sold, so the condition has not been met. This number is not greater than zero, it is zero. It will display the words that I've chosen for with false, and that is to say no. Of course, I could choose any words, and I could get an if statement to actually do some calculations, but for this task, that will suffice. At this point, having completed all of my subtask 3 components, I'm going to press save. I'm now going to look at subtask 4. Again, I need to be in the animals worksheet. I'm asked to create a column chart showing the stock quantities of animals and to do that, not only would I need the stock quantities, I'd also need to be aware of which animal is which. To do that, I can do the following. I'm going to select the animal and the stock quantity from B3 all the way down to C11. I'm going to navigate to the insert button along the ribbon. And I'm going to click on a column chart. I'm going to pick the first one that's made available. I'm going to move this slightly to the side and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so I can see it clearly. At this point, 
I'm asked to add a few specific axes titles, some data labels, and a graph title. Well, I've already got the graph title here. I might click into it and change it slightly. I think I'm going to call it animal stock quantity. And then clicking into my graph, at the top, I've got design and format. Well, under the design tab, I'm going to add some elements. I'd like a primary horizontal axis title. I'd like a primary vertical axis title. These have now been populated. Along the bottom, I'm going to click into it. And these are my types of animal. And up the side, I'm going to click into it, selecting the content that's already been populated. And this is my in stock quantity. Finally, I've been asked to add some data labels. So clicking into the chart, going to the chart tools design, I can add an element called data labels. And I'm going to have it at the outside end. And this is a nice visual way to tell me that actually I have two tortoises, I've got 28 goldfish, and all the rest. For the second part, I'm asked to create a second chart. So I'm going to move this original chart just down to the side so I've got access to it later. I'm asked this time to show the profit margin sales of the animals. So again, I need to select the animals between B4 and B11, but this time I need the profit margins. So I need M4 to M11. The easiest way to create this is to select B4 to B11. And holding down the control button, I can select M4 to M11. I can then go to insert. I can click on my column chart and again the first one. And I'm going to move and just make that slightly bigger so I can work on it. Again, I'm asked to add some labels, a title, and the finally, I'm asked to change the column colours. Well, as previously, in my chart tools design, I can add some elements, some primary, vertical, and horizontal axis titles, and I can amend them as required. Again, I have my animals on my x axis. But on my y-axis, I have my profit percentage. And I can give this chart a title, something such as profit percentage of animals stock. Finally, it's asking me to change the color. I've got two graphs at the moment, and I'd like this one to stand out a little bit. So I can select my bars, I can go to format, and I can change the fill colour to a colour of my choice. I could in fact select them individually, and I could choose different colours for different animals. Etc, etc. Having done with that chart, I'm now going to move that to a location where I can access it at a later point. Finally, I'm asked to create a pie chart showing the capacity to house totals. In other words, how many animals can I stock? The data is between B4 and B11 and D4 and D11. We could insert I'd like a pie chart and if I do it that way I haven't currently got any data within. However I can right click and choose select data. I'd like my values to be the capacity to house 
and I can give that a name. I then want my horizontal, in other words, what are those points, rather than being populated 1 to 8, as the name of my animals. So I can click on my range, which goes from cats to goldfish. And I can press OK. Now actually, that's exactly the same as the initial way that we showed. We can select cats to goldfish, B4 to B11, and I can hold the control button and select my capacity, D4 to D11, and I can insert a pie chart. Both with the same outcome, and the latter is far quicker, but just so you're aware, there are two different ways to do that. Finally, would like some data labels and a graph title. The title's already there. I'm going to call it Capacity to House Animals. And again, as previous, I need to make sure that I've clicked my graph and via the design, add chart elements, I can include the design, add elements, I can choose some data labels and I think I'll put them on the outside end. Now having done all that, I've noticed an error. My capacity to house is still a not applicable, it's still an error. The reason being, I don't actually have any birds within my VLOOKUP. Well, there's a way around this. I'm going to add the word birds and I can house 100. This has now taken my formula from B2 to C10. Going back into my animals worksheet, I'm now going to change the VLOOKUP of my table reference. At the moment, it says B2 to C9. But if I delete and change the 9 to 10 and press enter, I can do the next step. And now drag down. And we'll notice that all the graphs that we've created previously have been updated to reflect the new VLOOKUP change. At this point, having completed my graphs, I'll be saving. For subtask 5, we need to create some conditional formatting. So navigating to the animals worksheet, we're going to select I4 to I11. We want the words yes to appear green, whilst the words no to appear red. The yes and the no has already been populated by the if statement created previously. So to achieve this, we click on conditional formatting and we click on manage rules. We'd like a new rule and we're going to change it to format only cells that contain. We're going to change to specific text and we're going to enter the word yes. We want to format that whereby the font goes a particular colour, in this case green. And we can press OK and OK again. The second rule, by clicking on New Rule, will be to format the cells that contain a specific text that this time says No. And again, we click on Format, but this time in the font colour, we'd like it to go red. We can press OK, OK, and OK. We'll then notice that the word yes has gone green, whilst the word no has gone red. For the next task, we want to add some conditional formatting that removes the div slash zero error. The error remaining there is fine, but we actually want to get rid of the error being shown up on screen. To do that, we'll select M4 to M11, and again, we'll go to conditional formatting, and we'll manage the rules. We're going to create a new rule 
This time, we're going to format only cells that contain an error. I would like the writing to not be in black. I don't mind div error being shown, but actually, I don't want to visually see it myself. So I can click on Format. I can change my font color, and I can match it to the background color of the cell. I can press OK, and OK, and OK. This time, if there's an error, it just won't be shown. It's still giving me the error, and I'm given a warning for that. But visually, it's a lot nicer to see. At this point, having completed the conditional formatting task, I'm going to press save. The final task that I need to create is to produce a pivot table. If I navigate to the sales worksheet, I'm given a variety of information. A pivot table is a very quick and easy automated way to find out some information from a large set. So I'm going to select B2 to E15 and I'm going to go on to insert. I'm going to use the pivot table wizard. I click on pivot table and it's got the range selected and I'm going to make it produce a new worksheet. I'm going to press OK and on the right hand side I'm given some fields. I'd like to compare the salesperson, so I tick salesperson, and I'd like to compare how much money they've sold. I can then close down my pivot table field and very clearly I'm given the different people in the group and how much money each person sold. And I can see at this point that Mark has sold the least, whilst Paul has sold the most. I also get given a grand total of all sales. My final task is to then change the worksheet name. It created the pivot table in a new worksheet as I requested, and by default it calls it a sheet number. I'm going to change that name to pivot table and press enter. I think I'm going to move that just to the right hand side so I've got access to it at the very end point. Having completed that, I can hit save and that draws us to a conclusion for the first task of the data management skill group of formatting and formula.